Welcome back to the Law News Network. I'm your host, Caroline Polisi, and we have a special segment coming up for you today. At 1.30, we're gonna take you live to the courtroom out of Palm Beach County, Florida, where Tiger Woods is expected to plead guilty to reckless driving. He was initially charged with DUI. Remember, he was found uh, last May on the side of the road in his Mercedes. I think by now we've all seen uh, the footage of uh, him being interrogated and investigated uh, late that evening. We have a very special guest here to talk with us today. Anthony Tall is here. He's a sports lawyer and agent and founder of Aspire Sports Group. Anthony, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for inviting me on. So talk to me a little bit. I know, Anthony, you've been following this uh, for a long time. What's Tiger Woods been up to since that uh, sort of quite embarrassing uh, footage of him was released last May? Well, he's been trying to rehab. He's been uh, working on his golf game, and he did qualify about two or three weeks ago for one of the upcoming tournaments. But he's been, uh, he's been working out, been trying to get back into his regimen, uh, of uh, working with his golf pro and get his golf swing together. And he's been trying to get back on tour from all the reports and all the accounts out there. It's been, it's been an uphill battle for Tiger for the last, I would say, at least seven years, at least from a PR perspective. Tiger Woods has taken a huge hit. I mean, uh, he was a golden boy, mm -hmm. you know, all the way up until about 2008 when he won his last major. And then 2009 when he had the initial accident or incident with his wife where with the with the SUV the Escalade um, since then it's been a PR battle for him I am a Tiger fan I'm rooting for Tiger now this incident coming up this, this DUI I do think it's important to note and some people may disagree with me it, it is important to note that this was from a, a prescription medication that does not change the way the law affects it with regard to him being under the influence he still has the same it's still as if he was under the influence of whatever, but uh, but but Anthony, know, Anthony, I have to ask you, what about the uh -huh. THC? What about that? Marijuana. Well, the TH, well, the THC, from everything that I've read and all the accounts, the THC has 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 no effect on this pleading he's taking today, and there was nothing found in his blood that said there was THC. Um, everything that all of my account says that it was from prescription medication. Okay, and, one of which uh, we know was Vicodin, which we just was, which is of course an opioid. We just aired a special on the opioid crisis, but wasn't mm -hmm. w didn't Tiger say he was attempting to self medicate, uh, coming off the heels of his, I think it was his fourth back surgery. Yeah, 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 yes, he was. He was attempting to self medicate. He was attempting to self medicate. And what I'm, I guess, what my point that I was trying to get across was um, that. It's different than uh, it's different than him being out there just totally plastered out of his mind yeah. drinking all the alcohol. So some people may disagree with that, but I think that's an important distinction to make. Um, no, it absolutely you know, is, and we we really saw. I, I know by now we've all seen that that footage. I mean, he's clearly uh, very sedated uh, in in that video. He can hardly really talk. Um, he doesn't, but. Oh, yeah. but but you're right. He doesn't oh, yeah, appear intoxicated. Yeah. It's more. It's more just uh, you know slurred speech and just kind of out right. of it, really. Right. Right. Yeah. He, he he should have been driving. You know, I'm just making a distinction because I've done maybe I've, I've done tons of DUI cases and I've seen the worst of them. And a lot of times it mostly involves alcohol. Yep. Um. So I'm just making a point. I'm not advocating anyone driving under the influence, no matter what it is, whether it's Vicodin or whether it's cough drop medicine or alcohol. I just think the Tiger took that hit from a PR perspective in the beginning. It was as if he was drinking alcohol, like he was a 21-year-old kid, and that turned out not to be the case. Right. So that's what I'm basically talking about with that regard. Now, at this hearing, what's going to happen is this is, a, this is basically from everything that I've read and from following this case, this is going to be a plea deal. It's going to be a diversion program. Obviously, Tiger has no prior history of drinking or driving or anything like that to that effect. So he'll take a plea deal. He'll be put on probation for probably a year. He'll do some mandatory AA classes, some along that effect. And uh, after that, he, the, the, uh, the plea bill or the conviction should be dismissed. That's generally how they work. It'll be expunged from the record, as I understand it. Uh, however, Correct. If he reoffends during that time period, he could be charged then with a second offense DUI. So they're not going to charge him with the DUI now. He's pleading, apparently, he's going to plead to the reckless driving charge, but 
the stakes are pretty high for him on that probation period. So you can be sure that uh, he will be on high alert for that, that as, as I understand it. Now, do you know Douglas Duncan, who apparently is Tiger Woods' attorney, or is, is he known sort of in the DUI uh, land? No, I don't know him, okay. and I don't know his history, but I'm assuming if Tiger has him on his team, he's top-notch, right. and he's, he's, he's qualified. Just going back a little bit to what you said about the reckless driving, that's true. And going back to what you were saying about, about Tiger being cautious, like I said, it's important to note that Tiger hasn't been, other than what he was doing in his private life, on the, uh, Tiger hasn't really been irresponsible with regard to, responsible with regard to breaking any laws or anything to that effect. So I think it's okay. safe to assume, I think it's safe to assume that he can do one year probation without violating it and getting off of that and getting the, and getting the, uh, the, um, Right, right. right. And this will not be uh, the first time that Mr. Woods has entered uh, an addiction facility. You sort of uh, opaquely referenced the 2009 incidents that that I think we all remember. But sort of take, can you take us back there just for a recap for our viewers uh, who may not be as (laughs) as aware? (laughs) Yeah, well, what happened in 2009, as the the famous story goes, in 2009, he obviously had an argument with his then wife. Elin Norgen, um, excuse me if I'm pronouncing her name wrong, but her name was Elin, and at the time, uh, something something occurred where they ended up outside. He was in his escalator, and the golf club was smashed into his window. So at that point, a whole bunch of, of uh, women that had allegedly, and some, I guess he has kind of uh, capitulated and agreed to, um, he was he had had affairs with several women basically around the country. The story goes he would meet a woman at a bar, and obviously they were like, hey, this is Tiger Woods, and, and uh, he would invite him to his room and things like that. At that time, after that, because Tiger was known, as I was saying earlier, as the golden boy. He was yep. the golden boy. He was Obama before Obama. Yeah. And um, that his, 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 his uh, reputation took a hit. So he entered into a sex addiction rehab, I recall, um, which a lot of people seem to do, a lot of celebrities seem to do when they get caught. Yeah, um, he really started that, that trend, right? Off. He was kind of the poster child for sort of the yeah. sex addiction defense. Look, ladies and gentlemen, it's not my fault. I have a horrible addiction, um, addiction to sex. And so, you know, I- I'm going to rent- enter rehab um, to sort of fix the problem. Uh, I think it's kind of... Uh, you know, I say it with a, a hint of sarcasm because I don't know how much I really believe <laughs> in in that in that defense. But he really um, he wore it well. He 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 really you know I think he re- rehabilitated his image thereafter. Don't you? I well no uh, he he did to a certain extent. Yeah. but He hasn't been back and won a major since that incident. And Tiger, I I, I know you. We spoke briefly about your sports background, but Tiger. <laughs> What Tiger accumulated and what, what he did was so phenomenal in such a short time. We'll probably never, ever see again um, from a young kid. I mean, this guy came onto the scene and just blew it up. Yeah. Winning at Masters at 21 years old. Um, a, a lot of the things that are etched in our sports memorabilia mind come from Tiger Woods. The fist pump in the air. Yep. Um, Nike on his shirt. He, Like I said, this guy... He never recovered from it. I'm hoping he does. I, yeah. I don't think it's too late. Golf is a sport you can play a long time, but it's been so long. And I have to say that the passing of his father in 2006, he was very, very, very close with his dad. Right. Um, that really took a lot out of him, I believe, in my opinion. It so took you, a lot out of him. He hasn't been to get since. The same thing. You think that reputational hit took a toll on his golf game? I think, I think it took a toll on his golf game. For sure, I think being separated from his kids and, yeah. and the whole custody thing uh, really took a lot from him, and, and he wasn't able to perform professionally. But I know for sure, from a PR perspective, he took a huge hit. Yeah. And uh, the fact that he wasn't able to go right back and win the way he had been used to or how we had accustomed to him winning just kept the PR, uh, the bad PR out there for him.